Nation to another glorious day here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I got my best buddy Brent here. We're going to talk about concrete. But I got specific concrete I want to ask you and talk to you about, if you don't mind, Brent. Sure, go for it. Just want to know, are you down with RCC? You know me. I am. And uh, roller compacted concrete dams are one of the most cost effective and fast wait, track Wait, wait, wait. No, no. Back up. Mm -mm, no. Dams. Yeah. Roller compacted concrete dams. I Is that... Not, not what you're talking about? Well, not. I'm not saying they're not there, but most time what I see is pavement. So we're going to talk about pavements too, right? Yeah, let's All talk right. about pavement. I would rather talk about pavements. Actually. Well, we can still talk about the damn RCC if you want to. <laughs> no, I think that the damn RCC is, is RCC that's, that's excellent to know about for sure. And it's a cost-effective, fast-track way to build a dam. Uh, there's a lot of RCC dam construction going on in places that are building their infrastructure. Uh, places uh, like uh, some of the rural areas of Africa and other places where they're, they're building hydroelectric dams, uh, that kind of thing. But pavements... But real quick, before you get there, you yeah. talked about cost-effective and, and quick-paced. Yes. I understand what RCC does and how it's quick-paced, I'm sure. We're going to talk about it from a pavement side. But an RCC dam versus a cast-in-place dam, why is it so much quicker? Well, you don't have the the same effort required in foam work. The same you don't have the same effort and required in consolidation of the concrete with a lot of manpower. You're able to construct an RCC dam a lot of times with dozers and rollers and a concrete supply, uh, you know, showing up in dump trucks and they're dumping it and spreading it and raising that dam up in lifts. There's videos uh, out there. I know there used to be a group uh, on, a, on a site I was a member of that had an RCC dams group. It was really interesting, okay. yeah. Uh, but RCC pavements is really what I know better than dam concrete. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, let's start that over. Not completely. No, we're not going to start over. We might as well just run with it. Uh, okay. Let's so, just talk about pavements and what it does. Let's talk about, sure. before we even get into the, the concrete portion of it, we're talking about, you said dozers or uh, a, a spreader such as like you see in asphalt, and you got rollers much like what you would with asphalt, which is why a lot of people are using it. It's very familiar to them. Right. On the pavement side, for yes, sure. Sir. Yeah. So, you have an asphalt spreader uh, that is specially equipped with some tamping bars is what I see most often. Uh, so you have a heavy duty asphalt spreader that's got these tamping bars that, that provide the necessary vibration to consolidate the RCC pavement. Uh, and then you spread the concrete out and then come back with a, with a roller and compact it to the desired compaction. Uh, and there's different ways to determine that. Um, but uh, the main thing I wanted to call, call your attention to was the, the differences in the mix. Yes. from conventional concrete. Let's start with that. Um, roller compacted concrete can best be described as very, very low slump concrete. So low, in fact, one of the tests that I use to see if we're close is I'll grab some of the RCC and ball it up in my fist. And if I open my fist and it remains in the snowball shape, doesn't you don't want it to fall apart like powder, but if it remains in a snowball shape, then that is about the right consistency. Somewhere between six and eight percent moisture is what you're looking for in a roller compacted concrete mix. But it looks very dry. It does. It, it looks extremely dry, so it's more close to what you would see in some uh, precast type concrete. Not all of it, but I'm thinking more of a pre-stressed slabs and whatnot. Yeah, something like that. A lot of more consolidation going on it versus using the moisture and the water into it to help consolidate it. Exactly. Some of the advantages it comes from placing that concrete so dry is that your drying shrinkage is very limited. So right. you, the, the, the cracking that comes from drying shrinkage is, is much more limited than you would see on conventional concrete pavement. Uh, in most cases, uh, the, it's placed differently as, as we mentioned with an asphalt spreader, so your manpower may not be as much as conventional concrete. You know, it's a little less aggravating to place in some, some cases. Your QC methods are going to differ, um, again, compaction, making sure that you get the right roller effort uh, on that pavement to get those compaction numbers. Which you can take compaction tests with a nuclear density gauge, yes. and then you also can also make cylinders out of it, or you can core it even afterwards if you want to. 
Yeah, I, they, it depends on who you're talking to. They're going to have their preferences. I, pre I prefer to take cores out of the actual pavement because it's difficult to mimic that compaction that's happening in the field with a cylinder. So you can have a Hilti hammer or something and, and try to mimic it. Well, there is an ASTM method for it. Oh, yeah, there is. An, yeah. <laughs> so cost. What, what about cost comparison, Joshua? I, you know, I'm not the guy who deals with cost. You were the one who dealt with concrete all the time, and I just watched it go down and, and got to test it and say how great and wonderful it is. Yeah, so it's going to vary depending on the area you, that you're in, um, but cost, all in, labor and everything, is probably going to save somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 10 to 20 percent uh, over conventional concrete. It's going to be a little more expensive over traditional paving materials. Um, but there are some benefits on the durability side I was to ask some you, of those traditions. With this, we get a lot of durability because it does go down as quick as asphalt does, but the durability is going to last longer. Exactly. And you, that's the whole idea is let's have structures that last a very long time. And if you really want to take the durability up, you can talk to us, give us a call, uh, give us, shoot us an email. And uh, spray lot concrete protection products work very, very well on roller compacted concrete. We'd love to talk to you about it. So there's just a few examples of where RCs can be used from dams to pavements. If you got any questions, let us know, like, subscribe, and tune in for the next video. Thank you.